Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm with Steve, and we're talking about Final Cut Pro 10 and uh, something audio related. Audio related. Uh, I have a lot of sound effects. In fact, I have folders and folders of sound effects, and I, um, I'm always looking for a specific sound effect. It's hard because there's, you know, sitting there and listening through a whole bunch of the, getting the right sound of the door closing or the right sound of a bone breaking right. or something. Now, normally in Final Cut, you would access your sound via the sound browser. Yes, and, uh, in the bottom right some, corner there. There's some things that I don't like about it, and I like to show you what I don't like about it, so I can show you what to fix to make it happy again. Oh, great. Okay, okay so, I'd like to see this. All right, so I'm over here in the sound effects browser. Can and you just show how you open that for people who might not be familiar? Yeah, there's a little music note right oh, there, and you just okay. click it, and yes. you're in the uh, uh, sound browser. Sound effects and music and sound effects browsers, music and sound, yeah. Right. Okay. Now I'm also in the Final Cut Sound Effects folder, which you have to download as additional content. Can I think you drag that? Could you drag that bar just to show people that that, that bar? Usually, yeah. Sometimes you can drag it all the way up, and it it hides that. Oh, so yeah. some people might not know that that's there. Yeah, that's a good point. It might be so if I pull this default. up, then you can then choose your library. Yeah, here. you've got a pop up menu, but you actually can see much more detail by dragging down. Yeah. There. So I'm working with impacts and crashes. So I'm looking at all impacts. Well, one of the things I don't like about the sound library is that to preview these and I double click, there's there's one. And then in Soundtrack Pro, the old Soundtrack Pro, I was able to down arrow and it would play, play the next, automatically. Play the next, play the next. No, not in this, not in this. I have to double, select, click, double click. Or to go down and click on the little play or button at the bottom. Yeah, yeah I don't, don't like that. It takes a long time. Right, the other thing I don't like about this browser is that I don't know which of these effects are two-channel effects and which ones are six-channel uh, effects. 5.1, there's a uh, bunch of 5.1, right? Bugs me. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to go back to, actually, I'm going to go back to the, um, I'm going to extend that. I want, to, I want to see the folders. Okay. I know you like to not see them, but there's a reason. No, I, I like see to see them. them. I just right. wanted to show that right. people might not know you could see them. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to create a sound effects library. So I'm going to choose a new li library. I'm going to call this uh, sound effects library. I'm going to click save. And I have an event here. I'm not worry about the event name. I could name it. I'm not going to event, uh, do that for now. But I want to show you that you can drag these individual sound effects into the browser. Into an event. Right, into okay. an event. Mm -hmm. But this is also cool. I don't want to do that individually. I want to just grab this entire folder of impacts and crashes and drag the entire folder uh -huh. Into the browser. And I see from the hooked arrow that it's going to create an alias. It's not actually copying the media. Right. It's actually creating what's called a sim link. So mm -hmm. it's still going to be referencing the audio in okay. the Apple Loops library on your yeah. hard drive. Yeah. Right. So now, good to, good we'll to get know. back to that in a moment okay. because <laughs> that's secondary, but it's a very important point. I'm going to go ahead and go into the column view, and I want you to see this. Um, I have enabled in the metadata column, if I control click here, you'll notice I have a an item already turned on called audio channel count. Ah. And what's nice about that is I can see which ones are my two channel effects and which are my six yeah. channel effects. I see you've sorted by that column, so you've dropped all the six channel ones to the bottom. Right, you can sort, so that's a really good point. How do you sort in Final Cut? If you click the column, it sorts things by that criteria. So now all of the six channel are put together and then all the uh, two channel are put together. And if you together. click again, it'll reverse sort. Yeah, and then you click this button and it'll reverse sort, exactly. But here's another thing I like is Remember I said that you had to double click each yeah. one library? Yes. Not not so when it's in the in the browser. Huh. So if you play this, and I hit play. Yeah. And then down arrow, keep down arrow. Okay. You sold me. You sold me right there. That alone will save so much time. Because I have done this where I've had to preview dozens or if not hundreds of sound effects and be able to tap through them very quickly. Because you know when you like it. Oh, I guess because it's here, you could also favorite it. Immediately, well, which you couldn't do I in the sound browser. I got a better browser. idea. I'm going to make a smart collection. Oh, okay. Well, sh let's see. Let's right. see. I'm, I'm so, jumping no, in. No, no, no. It's good because I'm excited. I'm this glad is you're cool. excited because yes, this is yeah. this is the way that makes this is, sense. This to is me. really useful. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the event and I'm going to just create a let's say a new smart collection and I'm going to call this six channel crashes. All right. So I'm already creating a category and I'm going to edit that smart collection by double clicking bringing up the filter HUD, mm -hmm. and I'm going to add a rule for media type, and I want to do audio only. Okay. So there's all my audio. It's all your sound right, effects, Right, but it's, yeah. it's not specific enough. It hasn't... Yeah, because if you had other audio, if you had music in there or voiceover, yes. it would be in there as right, well. Right, but let's go a little bit further. Okay. Plus, 
let's go down and choose format. And under real, I'm gonna choose audio. Well, I'm gonna choose audio output channels and then enter six here. So huh. now I've created a scenario where this smart collection is collating only my sound six effects audio, audio, but only six channel only audio. Only six channel audio, okay, but it goes beautiful. One, one step further, and this is what's so awesome about smart collections. I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to choose text, and under text I want it to say, because there's more than just crashes in there. I can type in here and type crash. So includes now, crash. Includes, includes okay. crash. So any sound effect with the word crash, that six channel will automatically be filtered. Ah, okay, so that way you know you've just got those, you can flip through them, and then any ones that you really love, you could hit F to favorite. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I'd still want to do that, because you, you just took a huge massive set of effects and narrowed it down to the ones you want to preview. You can preview them really fast and choose this This whole workflow is so much faster and easier. This is great. I, I think this is really, the again, the huge selling point of Final Cut Pro is that you can do this. And one last step, one last thing mm -hmm. I'd like to point out is I said that, well, you pointed out that these are sim links. These are pointing to a file. A lot of times I want to take my sound effects with me and if you go to another Mac and that those sound effects aren't mm -hmm. installed, those your sound effects aren't going to be available. So one last step because one last step I take is I'll select the library and I'll go into library, library properties and I'll click the consolidate button and I will consolidate all the sound effects into that library. Okay, assuming the library was set up as in library, which that was. Which is. it was. Now, yeah. why this is important because at, at our studio, we have a number of editors and we need to all access uh, the same library. So when I, if I need a sound effect, I open that library, use it, I close it, and Zion or Travis open it, all the sound effects are there. I don't have to worry about uh -huh. where they are. They're sitting yeah. on a server. They're already tagged, they're smart collection. It's, to me, it's a way better way of doing, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with massive sound effects. And by the way, you can do this with graphics too, and not right. just sound effects. So any kind of stock um, stuff any that you're using kind of over, again. over and over. Nice. Exactly. So. Stock video, stock sound effects, stock photography. Very, very yeah, interesting. Right. So Excellent. There's my little. Tip. All right. Yeah. Awesome one, Steve. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, please check us out at RippleTraining.com for tutorials in depth, Final Cut Pro, Motion, DaVinci Resolve, plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. And check us out on Facebook and Twitter if you do those things. We're very much on those, and it's a great way to keep up with what we're doing. And uh, thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.